You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. Meth, $300,000 biggest seizure. Assistant Fire Chief smoked out. The largest drug bust involving methamphetamine in the history of Sharp County yielded over a half pound of methamphetamine and approximately $50,000 in the United States currency on December 30, 2011, as a result of an ongoing investigation by officers from Sharp County at the residence of Teresa A. Griffin and Michael Neal Couch at the Burun Campground in Hardy. This probably has been the biggest drug bust we've had, Sharp County Sheriff Mark Hunt stated, we got over half a pound of methamphetamine and over $50,000 in cash, Counts continued, this is something that Chief Deputy David Huffmaster and DTF have been working on for months. It's exciting to get this much dope off the streets. When officers arrived at the Griffin residence, the entrance door was already open, so they knocked on the wall next to the door before stepping into view. Reportedly, a male identified as Couch was sitting inside the trailer holding an orange canister, which he then threw on the floor. Officers asked Couch to step outside, which he did, while they approached Griffin, who was also inside the residence, and asked if they could speak with her. Griffin asked the officer to come inside, at which time the officer observed a metal smoking device, digital scales, and a small baggie on a table in the living room. An investigator from the 3rd Judicial District Drug Task Force then asked Griffin if they could search the residence. According to reports, Griffin was informed several times that she had the right to say no. Griffin agreed that the investigator could search the residence, but that she did not want to go back to prison. At this time an officer looked inside the orange canister that Couch had thrown on the floor. Upon searching the canister, a large rock of suspected methamphetamine was found. There was also a green metal ammo box located on the floor in front of the sofa, in which two gallon-sized plastic baggies were found which contained a substantial amount of crystal substance that appeared to be methamphetamine, and $46,850 in the United States currency. After a thorough search of the residence, vehicle and premises, the total street value of the suspected methamphetamine was estimated to be around $250,000, found in 17 baggies in the residence, along with an unknown amount of green leafy substance suspected to be marijuana in 7 bags, approximately 20 syringes and various other items of drug paraphernalia, in addition to several containers of unknown pills and Max Grizzly potpourri. Upon searching the vehicle outside which was registered to Couch, $2,600 was found in Couch's truck along with two syringes, a fireman's badge and what was suspected to be marijuana. Griffin was arrested and charged with possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, methamphetamine, a Class A felony, use or possession with the intent to use drug paraphernalia, a Class D felony, possess a controlled substance, marijuana, a Class A misdemeanor and possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, Xanax, a Class D felony. Couch was arrested and charged with possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, methamphetamine, a Class A felony, two separate charges of use or possession with the intent to use drug paraphernalia, a Class D felony and a Class B felony, possess a controlled substance, marijuana, a Class A misdemeanor and possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, Xanax, a Class D felony. Couch was the assistant fire chief at Nine Mile Ridge Fire Department. According to Fire Chief Gary Gilliland, Couch will be terminated as soon as possible. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. ADL You Can't Refuse by Lauren Siebert The Pickers-style television show ADL You Can't Refuse recently began filming December 27, 2011, in the Quad Cities area. The dynamic duo production company owner Phil Contursi and inventor and co-star Randy Jack have been pounding the pavement and scouring sheds, yards and abandoned buildings in the hope of finding unique and interesting items and renewing their useful life by taking them to Chicago to be sold and reused. We've started getting a wide range of calls, co-star Randy Jack said, from Missouri, from flea markets that don't do a lot of business anymore, to homes, to old style and abandoned businesses. The filming of the first show took place in southern Missouri, in mainly the Thayer and Mammoth Spring area. It was a business that closed down about three years ago, Jack said, the man who owned the building brought in a lot of stuff from farms he owned. We got a lot of good items. After completing the picking and shooting in southern Missouri, the crew set their sights closer to home in Sharp County, at the house belonging to a man named Randy. We shot in Ozark Acres Randy had a lot of stuff, Jack noted, it was pretty incredible just to go out and walk through, the adventure was worth its weight in gold. When the crew had finished up a series of picking and filming throughout the area, the team returned to Chicago to unload and prepare for the next round of picking. 
We might be going down to Alabama, Jack said. There's a guy who has a warehouse full of stuff, and that would probably be about five to six days of picking. Then southern Louisiana, there's a man who has a lot of Civil War, World War I, World War II motorcycles, cars, and things like that. Jack noted that Al Capone's, in downtown Hardy, is also on the list. We stopped in and talked to Al. With the Al Capone name and our show from Chicago, we're really looking forward to going there, Jack said. I've known Al for a while and I know he has a lot of stuff, and he wants us to come and look. Each place that has been picked during the filming of the show has been an example of excellent treasure finding in its own respect. It's hard to say what is the best pick, Jack said, Randy's was the best pick for the primitives, whereas when we had a pick in Highland it was the best for conventional reclaiming items. They both have a lot of merit, Jack continued, you might go to a closed business and get really cool things for a certain area, and then you go to a place like Randy's and they're all equally as good. Jack did note, however, there was one item that was especially exceptional to him and he believed would be very big in Chicago. Actually the thing I liked most wasn't really old and it wasn't really valuable, Jack said, it was in southern Missouri, the guy had some 18-inch long black vultures that were handmade with vulture feathers. They were awesome, he said his son had made them for a project for high school, but I just had to have them. According to Jack, his real passion behind the show is of a more personal nature. Kids who may not have a fair shake at life are the underlying reason for embarking on the picking journeys. Phil and I love kids, we hate when kids are underprivileged with no chance of getting anywhere in life, Jack said. The end result of doing this show is, we hope we become semi-famous enough so we can actually go on a speaking tour and talk to kids, because if we're semi-famous they'll say oh yeah, those are the guys from the picking show dash and we'll be able to get into these high schools, Jack stated, and talk to the kids about following their dreams and aspirations in life, Jack continued, and do the things we've done. The end result of doing this show is to go on a speaking tour. That's our passion, but nobody knows that. If you have something you think may be of interest to ADL you can't refuse, please contact them at ADL you can't refuse gmail.com or call 870-710-1779. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. New Baker in town. Melissa Pinto is bringing her considerable talents towards and afterwards with homemade baked goods. A new bakery has recently opened in the Quad Cities area, Edwards and afterwards in downtown Hardy and head baker Melissa Pinto welcomes everyone to come and see what's new. According to Pinto, the bakery is at the height of innovation for the baking industry in the Quad Cities area, with new and different flavors and designs on a regular basis. I do interesting flavor combinations. I have something I call a cuppie, which is a layered cupcake in a cup, Pinto said. I have a few interesting flavors that are different, but they're very good. Among the different flavors Pinto has invented, some of the store favorites have been a strawberry lemon, with pink lemonade frosting, a pina colada with pineapple coconut rum flavoring, with coconut frosting, and a chocolate mocha cake with chocolate frosting. Pinto also noted that one unique factor of the bakery in words and afterwards is that every specialty item they have is made from scratch. All the frosting is homemade, it's not just your average box cake mix. Another feature exclusively at words and afterwards are the cake pops. A K-pop is a ball of cake, and frosting all balled together and dipped in chocolate. They are very good, Pinto said. According to Pinto, she perfected her art after beginning at a very young age. I am self-taught. I've been baking since I was seven, and I've always enjoyed baking, Pinto said. I did all the cooking for my family growing up. I'm the second oldest of six kids, so since I was 12 I've been making cakes, pies, noodles, Pinto continued, and then I started decorating. Before Pinto began baking at Words and Afterwards, she ran a business from home making specialty cakes. Greg called me because he had gotten my name from various people in the community, Pinto noted, I had a cake business out of my house the past year. Pinto puts a lot of thought into each of her designs, especially when she has a custom request. I prefer to have a couple weeks notice, Pinto said, on a cake especially a wedding cake. She noted that she will often spend even more time than that to get just the right design for the customer, whether it be a wedding cake or any other custom cake. According to Pinto not only can she make a wedding cake, but she is able to make a cake for most any occasion. I can make wedding cakes, birthday cakes, graduation, or anniversary, Pinto noted, adding, I do fondants, buttercream, just about anything. According to Pinto she hopes not only to be a provider of great baked goods, but also to be a service to the community. I'm hoping we will expand, I'd like to get to the point I can have a few more team members, Pinto said, I'd really like to see it take off.
It's a service to everyone, not just something that I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it because I enjoy it. Along with making all the desserts, breads and other specialties, Pinto also creates the baked goods used every day at words and afterwards. I supply all the bread and pita here, Pinto said. I also take orders here for people. I do sourdough, whole wheat, traditional, rye, cinnamon swirl and cinnamon raisin. I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday. If someone would like to come in to see the action for themselves then come on in and see me, Pinto stated. We have some amazing things going on. Thanks for listening to Spring River Chronicle Audio on the Go. Be sure to subscribe to the paper and check us out online at myspringriver.com.